Hey guys, welcome to a tutorial, and today I will be showing you how to sidechain properly. Well, you can sidechain many different ways, but this is um, uh, a way to sidechain your entire song to a kick. Now, <clears throat> I have this little setup here. I'm going to let you listen to it just to show you uh, how your song might sound without sidechaining. This is probably sounds nothing like what you're trying to make, but it's, it's an example. So yeah, I accidentally pressed the silence button there um, on the snare. So we're going to make this right here, the chords, side chain. Now, um, the problem that you guys might be uh, having when you're watching this video is you might have like a bunch of these inserts filled up, you might already have a song, and you just want the kick to side chain the song entirely, but when you try and do it, it side chains the kick as well. And if you don't uh, here's the way that you might have tried. This is the way I tried. I learned this technique from someone else. What I did was I used Peak Controller, which is a side chaining plugin. Well, it can be used for side chaining. It can be used for many other things too. Um, and then I put a uh, where is it compressor on the master channel, thinking that it would um, compress everything, the entire song. Since I wanted to compress everything, I thought that just putting it on the master channel was common sense. Well, here's what happens. Let's just link this to the controller, do the necessary stuff. Uh, now, now that's linked to this. Now, this compressor plugin right here in the master channel is connected to the Fruity Peak controller plugin here. So now this, the entire song is going to be side-chained to the kick. Um, actually, by default, it's going to want to mute the kick, so we're going to want to uncheck that. Um, and add some tension so that you can he actually hear the side-chain. But here's what happens. Oh, made a mistake. You need to go to compressor and bring the ratio up to about, maybe, just put it all the way up for now. So, I'm assuming that you can hear the problem. You can barely hear the kick. Well, you can, but it's like a short click. The kick is a short click. And the reason for that is because since you're, since you're um, side-chaining the master channel, it's side-chaining everything, including the kick, because the kick is going to the master. So you don't want to do that. So what you're going to want to do is keep the Fruity Peak controller on your kick with everything still set up the way you want it to and let's just assume that you have these four um, inserts you might have more you might have an entire song made and you've got all these inserts maybe up to 30 filled up with instruments what you're going to want to do is take every instrument that you have and link it to this other insert which doesn't have an instrument connected to it but is labeled the submix now, you don't, again, like I just stated, you don't want an instrument uh, connected to this insert. You don't want an instrument outputting to this insert. You just want this insert by itself. Because what this insert is going to serve as, uh, think of a folder. Think of a folder on your computer. You can um, put files in it, and uh, as long as all the files are in there, if you move the folder to a different part of your computer, all those files are going to move with it as well. And if you, let's say you have WinRAR or something, if you package that file up into a WinRAR file or a zip file, all those files, all those um, files inside of the folder are going to go into that zip or zip or WinRAR file as well. So whatever happens to that folder, if you delete that folder, it deletes all the files inside of it as well. Um, just think of that as a uh, short analogy as for what a submix is. We're going to 
connect all of these instruments, all these inserts, to the submix. So whatever we put in the submix, like if we put a um, uh, Vocodex plugin in here, in the submix, and the snare and the chords are connected to the submix, it's also going to apply Vocodex to the chords and the snare since they're connected to the submix and the, voca and the vocodex is in the submix. You get it? You better, because we're going to do this. So, uh, I'm clicking on it. Place, none. Alright, so what we're going to want to do is go to chords and um, go down to this little arrow that's below the submix. Don't have your submix selected. That's not how you do it you're going to want to right click this and click right to this track route to this track only so you do that and then you go to your snare and then right click this one again and route this to this track only so that's how you do it so now both the snare and the chords are connected they're routed to the submix so if we apply the compressor to the submix then it will apply the compression to both the chords and the snare like I just previously mentioned so we're just going to turn this ratio all the way back up link this to controller um, choose inverted for this option peak control for this option press accept and then we'll see what happens <laughs> As you could see, you could still hear the kick, and it wasn't being side-chained. Actually, you couldn't really tell because I added some stuff to the kick, so let's just get rid of all this. Now, I'm, I'm using the default kick, so the kick doesn't really sound as good, but at least you can tell that it's not being side-chained along with the chords and the snare. And... Uh, if I added another channel with, uh, just say, Parmer, for example, I'm just going to use the default noise, default preset, and uh, we're just to make make a loud, not a, loud, a long note here. This will assign to track five, the one right here. And we'll uh, rename this just Note Armor. Just to give an example, this is not connected to the submix, so this will not be sidechained. So if we were to play this, let's turn that down a little bit. So as you can hear, this is not being si this is not being side chained to the kick like the snare and the chords are. So, yeah. See if 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 it is actually routed to the submix, there will be this wire connecting from this arrow to the submix. Same with this one. There will be a little wire here. And um, as you can see, if we go to this uh, note harmer insert, there's nothing connected to it. And now if we did want this note um, if we did want this note side chain to submix, all we would have to do is um, click on it, uh, right click the submix arrow down here, route to this track only and boom, it's routed. So it's going to be uh, side chaining to the kick now. So as you could obviously hear, that is now being sidechained as well as the snare and the chords, although this entire time the kick has not been sidechained along with it, making it sound really weird. So now that you know how to do that, if you have inserts all the way up to like 30 or 40 or 99, which is the limit, uh, just go crazy. Um, if you have anything in insert 6 and you want it sidechained, just sidechained, just click on it. Uh, right click the arrow down here, route to this track only, do the same with this one, route to this track only, do the same with this one. 
route to this track only. It's the same thing, same deal. So now all three of these, whatever instruments are connected to these three, will uh, now be routed to this submix, and anything that's routed to the submix will be compressed or sidechained. It's they're basically both the same thing. And then, of course, if you want to control the sidechain, you could just go to the kick and uh, control how strong or weak the kick uh, the side chain is. So as you can see, you can make that kick really, you can make that side chain really powerful. So yeah, that's a really, really good technique that a lot of really big uh, producers use when they're using FL Studio. So yeah, thank you guys for watching, hope this helped, and uh, if you did like it, and you did find it useful, leave a like, and yeah, stay tuned for more videos, see you later.